whistle. Twenty hour break in. Time to change the oil. And that's what I'm gonna show you. On a 250 2020 DF 250 Suzuki. Twenty hours right after the break in. Alright folks. This is your oil drain plug, and there's a crush washer behind it. I don't know how else to do this, but I got a big oil, five gallon old used oil container, a big funnel, and it's sitting on a five gallon bucket. Really, you need to get it up a little higher, so I'll probably do that. Unlike a lot of the other engines, there's a, a scoop on like Hondas and things like that. But on this one, it's got this little lip right here. You can barely see it. And that might actually help the drainage. But I wish there was something like Mercury has where you tighten it up and you untighten it and it just comes out. So this can be a mess. So that's how I got it set up right now. And then what you're gonna need is this is my kit here. These are from my lower unit. These are the washers for the lower unit gear lube drains. I got a couple spare non, uh, non magnet plugs. I got cotter pins for my prop. And then I got a bunch of brand new crush washers that go behind that oil plug. And you need a new one of these. One of the most important things is don't overthrow away that expensive kit that you just got. You got your brand new outboard because this is going to undo the oil plug on the engine. So I'll show you how we're going to do this. Now normally what I would do is I would do this soon as I come home from being out on the water while the engine is still hot. Okay, but it's a weekend right now it's a Saturday morning I didn't have anything going on until next week so yesterday I got home it was too late it was raining and everything so I didn't run I'm not gonna run the engine just to heat it up it's only like I said the oil is still clean it's got 20 hours on it exactly right now so I did my break in and all that and now we're going to just dump this oil and then later on, I'm going to do the gear lube. I don't know if I'm going to do a video of that because that's really a mess. So, but let's get this done. And I'll show you basically everything you're going to need. Of course, of course, you're going to need, if you're going to do this 100%, you're going to need the very expensive Suzuki oil that X star, all right. It takes that 250 Suzuki takes eight quarts, so get yourself two gallons. This with tax just cost me seventy-two dollars. It almost cost me the same to do the incomplete oil change in my Dodge Cummins diesel truck. It's damn near a hundred dollars to do this every time, every hundred hours. You're going to spend $100 if you do it this way. Now, this is a Sierra filter. It's not necessarily the um, Suzuki one, but it's ident identical replacement. I got these and had them cheap uh, off of eBay. And um, the only difference, really, I believe, is the Honda ones, or not Honda, I keep saying Honda, the Suzuki ones are black. Okay? But, I had these, so I'm using it, okay? And, um, you know, this, I have this left over from my old Suzuki that this one just replaced. You're also going to need this. It's a whole lot easier to do your oil filter with one of these, okay? So, we'll go over that process when we get there. Okay, I'm going to be straddling the camera here to give you the best view. I put a towel down all under the bottom because 
this is just a mess. All right, so let's crack the. All right, and let's get ready for when it pours out and goes into this here funnel. And make sure that the crush washer comes off. All right. See the crush washer is coming off. There we go. And that oil is still got some clearness to it after 20 hours. So there you go. See? A mess. And there's your crush washer right there. Now, there's a whole lot of things that people do. They tilt the engine up, they do all kinds of stuff. I don't I don't know about all that. This is all I know is uh, just let her drain out standing straight up. That's the way I've just always done it. So you can see that oil is still pretty clear. All right. And then of course, it's gonna wanna run right down the side. All right, so that's what you got. Right there. Okay, and there's the crush washer. And you want to replace that. So, I'll go ahead and take one of my new ones and put it on there right now so I don't forget. And I think that's about good enough. Take your bolt, put it back in there. with your supplied giant Allen wrench. All right. Very handy. Comes in your little kit that you get. It costs you all that money. As they say, world's most expensive set of four tools. All right. And then you saw it wasn't super duper tight. So you're not going to over torque it. You just want to snug it. And there it is. Next step. And of course, oil goes all over the place. Especially if you're like me and the funnel falls off the jug. So when you're done this, get in here with a a rag and try to get it all up. Okay. I put it right up under the Tupperware there. Okay. As they say, the chaps. Or whatever the hell you call it. I call it the Tupperware. Okay. Clean all this up. And then I'll show you another thing that I do right afterwards. All right, here's another little handy thing to have. I have this on my Amazon Tools of the Trade page because I have two of them, one in my garage, one in the boat. Those sprayers, those trigger sprayers are for crap that you buy at Home Depot and all that stuff. I've done that, been there, done that, didn't get a free t-shirt. Solo, this is the big one, and then you got a smaller one. I really like this one. That's purple power degreaser. Straight, no water in it. Got this on my Amazon Tools of the Trade page because it's something that I use constantly. And you can go there to help support this channel and other reviews on other products. I meant to do a review on this or just at least a chit chat about it. But these things, are fantastic. Pump it up, put it on mist, tighten it up, and then I spray the engine with pure degreaser. Get rid of any of that oil that was on there. All right. 
there you go. And then I'll wash it off. This is like the one liter or something like that. This is the big boy or bigger boy. I love these things. And then next, we're going to change out the oil filter. Hey, I'm all ears if somebody's got a better way of doing this. I've often thought, pull the plug out and hurry up and stick in some kind of fitting with a hose. But, you know, you got to do a lot of experimentation and I don't have that. But if anybody has a, uh, a better way, by all means, put it in the comments below. All right, this fits on there perfectly. I take a rag and I just stick it in here just for the hell of it. In case some comes out. Everybody talks about doing that. All right, so just to pick up any drippage and spillage. All right. Not hardly a thing comes out. We get a new one, take some of the oil, put it around your o ring. You have to oil a little bit of oil right here. And what I always recommend doing is mark the date and or and the hours. And you can do this on the white one. On the black one, I have to put a piece of tape just so you know at a glance when it was done and then when you take it to a mechanic he can see it that you're keeping up you're keeping up with it alright and that's all done now I'm going to put the date alright it's May 30th Five thirty, and it's exactly this was changed at twenty hours. Boom, done. Now let's put in some oil. Okay, on the top of your Suzuki cover here, your other set of Tupperware, there is a decal. And the decal says, engine oil, 10W30 or 10W40. And it says capacity, oil capacity, 8.0 liters, right? 8.5 U.S. Right? quarts here. And that is the 8.5 is because you're putting on a new uh, oil filter. So I always keep a little extra oil on hand. Years ago, where my old engine, you couldn't do 10, it didn't say 1030. It said only 1040. But Suzuki's getting with the program and they're getting like everybody else. I don't know where they came up with the 1040. I don't believe anybody knows. All right, so there's the little decal to always remind you. Okay, your engine oil fill is right here. This yellow plug. I use a long funnel like this to get in there and stand up. And now I'm gonna pour in new oil. This is a funny little thing, but it happened to a friend of mine when he was putting in some kind of uh, ring free in a Yamaha. Okay, they're always gonna have this foil here, right? when you take the cap off. He actually got a piece of the foil down in. It fell down inside here 
inside the ring-free bottle, not the oil bottle. I'm just I'm just talking about it. And it went in to his gas tank. He poured it in, and it went into his gas tank, believe it or not. So, or it wasn't even the foil. It was the little cardboard washer went into, into his gas tank on his boat. And he says, do you think anything happened to it? Or it'll do anything? And I said to him, time will tell. <laughs> That's kind of a funny story. So make sure you get all things out of the way. Pour in these two, and then I'm going to check the level. And then I might just add a little bit just for the filter. And we're looking at the dipstick, and I'll show you where you want your oil levels. 30 something dollars right now. Or you can just use any other oil. They all probably come out of the same damn factory. It's only got to be, most of the time, you want to look at the API rating. This is SJ. And you always want the National Marine Manufacturers Association FC W certified oil. They're all the same. I'm sure they're all the same. Okay. But there's only a certain amount of companies in the entire United States that make this, make different oils, just like Walmart. The same people that make the Walmart oil is the same people who blend a lot of other oils for other companies. The Warren, I think it's Warren Petroleum. A lot of people think Walmart stuff is for shit, but it's not because it's all coming out basically the same place. But these are the two things that you want to look for. That and API SJ. Liquid gold. Let me tell you a story about a man named Jed. Poor mountaineer can barely keep his family fed. One day he was shooting at a rock. One day he was shooting at a something. And up come bubbling crude gold, that is. Beverly Hills movie stars. Boat. Bust out another thousand. Bust out another thousand. There you go. Two gallons of liquid gold. And don't forget, put the cap back on. This isn't something you're going to be wanting to do for the first time or two if you're not that mechanical with your kids hanging around bothering you. All right, one thing that I've noticed over the years of having Suzuki's is it's many times it's very difficult to get a really good reading on the dipstick. You pull it out and you take a look at it and the oil is running all over the dang place, okay? So you wipe it off and then you dip it back down and you pull it out and it's still all over the place. Many times it seems like it takes a couple times to get it. But in your owner's manual, what it'll say is basically on your dipstick, let's see if we can see this. Okay, there's a hole right there. And there's a hole right there. And you want to be near the top, near this hole, at least. You don't want to be down there. You want to be up here. So when you're checking your oil, you want to be in and around this mark. A little bit down from it, it doesn't matter. But you want to be in and around that little hole right there. And this would mean you're in deep caca right there. Because if your oil is down here at this little hole, then you got a problem. And I found sometimes you got to push the dipstick a certain way. Let it go down in there. Then pull it out and take a look at it. I know I'm near that. All right. And then 
I have to fill this up and the, the filter will soak in that little point eight, eight point something quarts, 8.3 quarts. So many times what I'll do is I'll take just a little bit and I'll top it off. Yes, these splash covers, this is how I'm protecting my engine these days. And the reason being is because my old, I call it my old, my last Suzuki, the engine cover got beat to hell because people were smacking it all the time with rods and sinkers. And I don't know how they do it. Believe me, I don't know how they do it. But this thing does not budge. So being that this is a brand new engine, it's starting life under a cover. And if you're interested, like I said, there'll be a link below in the text box, the video description. There'll be a link below to my Amazon Tools of the Trade page. Well, here you go, folks. This is my Amazon Tools of the Trade page at Captain Dave's Sport Fishing. Captain Dave's Tools of the Trade. Here's the sprayer, wallets, all kinds of stuff that I use. Fish scaler, but I don't use it as a fish scaler. Some of my favorite knives. My number one braid cutter. Sharpening tools, the biggest spook lures, hooks, Makita, one-handed reciprocating saw that you put the fillets all blades in for cleaning those nasty sheep shed. Knife storage tools, pliers, compact flashlight, Releasing tools for giant bull redfish and offshore fish. Here's where we're getting into some boating items. The fuel filter that I use. The fuel filter elements. You can't forget the Mr. Funnel. Fantastic. I have many a video about that. Ethanol test kit. How to fix your uh, junky old gas can, oxygen regulator, because I run my live well as all oxygen, an oxygen bottle holder, tubes, my favorite book, The Liberal Media Complex, Industrial Complex, tackle storage, the most bulletproof reel in the world, two different sizes, the braid I used, the leader material I use, ugly sticks. The famed rubber bucket for making giant, giant ice cubes. Drink holders for your boat. Did a, did a review on this right here. How to take those nasty plastic bumpers and trim and make it look brand new again. I reviewed that product. Here is the Suzuki Splash covers right here. They also have for other engines. Here is my 4th of July Splash cover. Some other clips to hold your outboard straight. Different lights that I've reviewed. Barrels to run out your outboard to clean that nastiness out of your outboard. Ridline, to do your ridline flush. Then some trailer help. There's a cowboy ramp. They sometimes call that a cowboy ramp. You don't need a jack to lift up a tandem axle trailer. I keep one of those right on my trailer. Portable air compressor, the best portable air compressor I've ever owned. 
and the ladders that I use. I use this one for getting in and out of the boat all the time. And then I keep this one in the bed of my truck locked up so I can get in and out of my boat at the bait shop and things like that. So, here you go. Captain Dave's Tools of the Trade. Tools of the Fishing Trade is what I refer to it as. And some of the little things that I've reviewed and talked about. Especially this right here. I put that. The Essie Avispa Knife. Here's a coyote tan one, a white one, and the black one. I beat the absolute daylights out of that knife, and they almost don't come tougher. The solo sprayers. Get rid of those trigger sprayers. I keep one of these on the boat all the time. And you can find all these and things that I've included. I move things around. I add and delete. Right here at Captain Dave's Tools of the Trade page. The link will be in every single video description. So there you go. Please visit and you can patronize this and other items to keep the reviews coming and help support my channel. I don't ask for anything other than if you're checking stuff out on Amazon start here. I literally just make pennies on this and it really helps out in the long run. Thank you very much. And I have I think two different kinds of covers there. I got one that's a themed themed cover that is sort of a, a stretchy material. I have one and it's little American flags and I'll be running that cover around 4th of July, of course. But now I run this one, and what I did with it, as soon as I got it, I took a can of fabric, sun, and waterproof uh, spray, and I sprayed the whole cover. And I can hit this with water, and water beads off. But over time, it'll wear off, so what I'll do is I'll redo it here in a few months. And it just buckles up underneath right here and everything is still accessible so all right well that's been changing the oil on my brand new DF 250 AP 2020 Suzuki with 20 hours on it and uh, right at 20 hours my little notification came up on my gauge beep, beep. Oil change time. So, uh, I'm good to go now. Till 120 hours. When I get 120 hours, the next 100 hours, the alarm will go off again, telling me when to change the oil. So, thanks for watching. I know this was a really simple little video, but I figured I'd do it because it's part of my care and maintenance that I do. I'm not going to go in depth like I did many times in my other videos um, with my other engine. I'm not going to go into all these depth of maintenance and things like that because, again, that would be just sort of redundant. But now you know how simple it is to change your own oil. You don't need to go into the shop and do all that. And uh, one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give the, the engine bolts here. Down here, I'm going to give that a little bit of a torque just to see if they loosened up or if the bolt stretched. And next, I'm going to do the lower unit gear lube. So, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Sitting around the house, got nothing to do.